I think it makes a big difference. I mean, he somebody is within two feet of him who hasn't identified themselves, who he doesn't know, and is grabbing the screen door, which was not part of the narrative before. And it was my client's reasonable belief that he was coming in after him. What was he supposed to do? Wait another few seconds and have the guy in on top of him? You know, I think that's that's what he was thinking. Our, our contention is that when Mr. Yarl's grabbing the door handle to come in, that all of a sudden that's the imminent threat. Because this guy's a stranger. He's not one of his friends. I mean, some guy's grabbed the door handle, it's going to come in. So what does, does uh, Lester do at that point? Does he just wait till he's attacked from a stranger? Twelve witnesses testified during today's preliminary hearing. In addition to their testimony, multiple exhibits were admitted into evidence. These included recordings of 911 phone calls made by neighbors, photos of the scene, and a recording of the defendant's call to 911. There is no legal racial component to the offense of assault in the first degree or armed criminal action. My focus remains on what is required by the law. After reviewing all the evidence presented in court, the judge found the state had met its burden and set the case to circuit court where a trial can happen. It's important for the judge when they're making a determination on probable cause to hear the evidence. Uh, part of that evidence was Ralph's testimony. I've done it myself. I've gone to the wrong house. So that's not something on you should, but it doesn't cause for somebody to shoot you because of that. It's just too many guns. People quick on shooting. You put it for ask questions, you would shoot. That's the nature of Kansas City. That's the nature of Missouri.